Hello. Welcome to another Pen Talk. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope to uh, bring you um, a little bit of a different video experience uh, in this uh, episode. Um, recently, I was in Staples. Um, I don't really remember why I was in Staples, but I was in Staples. And uh, I went looking around and I saw these notebooks which were really inexpensive. The most expensive one here cost a dollar and the least expensive one cost 25 cents and for the life of me I can't imagine how any notebook could cost 25 cents but that's what they were selling them for. So I picked up three notebooks that I thought well, from feeling the paper or whatever might have potential to be uh, used by fountain pens and I figured I would peruse the uh, pen section at Staples which I have not done for a while Certainly not looking for fountain pens, but for some reason I was motivated. And I came across this little gem by Schaefer. Uh, <clears throat> a Schaefer Viewpoint Calligraphy Pen. And I was intrigued by it. And even more intrigued by its price, which in Staples was $5.99. Uh, for those of you that may have watched some of my other videos, you know I've experimented with... Um, inexpensive pens. I've found many of them to be uh, very good writers, uh, very good value, so I figured I would give this one a try. And from looking at uh, the nib, it looks like a pretty decent uh, nib on there, probably about a 1.8, maybe even a 2 millimeter stub. So uh, <clears throat> I've not opened this up. I figured we would all experience this for the first time. As usual, the classic crappy blister pack wrapping, which is really no easy way to to get it open and preserve some of the packaging, but we'll open it up. I thought the whole thing with the packaging, showing the nib, uh, showing the two cartridges, uh, showing the pen, I thought was quite nice. On the back of the literature they have some descriptions and as you can see there's a number of different languages there so obviously this pen uh, was designed to be sold in internationally and I can imagine it to be uh, quite competitive. We'll see how it writes in, in a minute. The pen is, <laughs> needless to say, extreme. I mean this weighs almost nothing. I thought it was interesting with the uh, emblem uh, on the top how it tells you what the pen is and it is two millimeter ah, look at that uh, <clears throat> the section just screws into the barrel and I like the openings here a la Lamy Safari a uh, nice little rubber grip here kind of on the small side but at least it's a nice length uh, <clears throat> I'm not a cartridge guy as probably many of you have already gathered so I, I have a a Schaefer converter, which let's see if it will work. This uh, Schaefer converters are not easy to find, so I figured I'd pick this one up. It looks like it should work because it's a, a very narrow opening. You know, if you compare this to platinum <laughs> cartridges, obviously that's one extreme to another. So if we put this in there, ah, it seems to fit very, very well. And now the real key is to see if the length will not interfere with the barrel and it looks like it'll uh, put to come together very well. Not very aesthetically pleasing of, of what it looks through the opening there in the barrel, but uh, let's not be petty about that. If I wanted to worry about that, I would use a cartridge. Uh, we're gonna just use a standard basic um, Waterman uh, Serenity Blue, and as Mr. Brown called it in his early days, uh, Florida Blue. And we'll do an uncapping. Um, I, I don't like the cartridge for it being dark because you really can't see the ink level in there and you really can't see where the piston is, but we're lowering the piston, inserting the pen into the ink, uh, drawing the piston up. I'm only going to do a one fill. I'm not going to try to max it out. We'll get off the excess ink back into the bottle. I have my trusty rag candy or tissue and we'll clean off the nib. Assemble the pen. Put the cap back on the ink. Very important thing to do. And set that aside. Set the cartridges aside. 
So um, <clears throat> the pen does post nicely, fits well in the hand, <laughs> just extremely light. I mean, I haven't weighed it, but my guess is uh, with the cartridge and everything else, it's less than 10 grams. So what I thought we would do is we would start with the 25 cent pad. This is a single subject pad. And we'll take a look at how this writes. I'd say I'm impressed. It's uh, it's smooth, and it certainly does give you built-in line variation. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, I've used the uh, Franklin Christoph Music Nib, and that is also very nice, but this one is even easier to um, do some very nice writing. And I would say overhand, uh, the paper's performing relatively well. It's laying down a fair amount of ink. Uh, I'm not an expert on <coughs> feathering and all those other things. It's certainly uh, going to give you show through because this is very thin paper. Uh, but I would say the bleed through is, uh, is minimal. Now, it's not a paper I would write on both sides, but certainly with a pen like this, uh, one wouldn't. So first impressions, I'm um, very impressed for a $6 pen. I thought we would just um, go to another extreme, and this is my Heritage 91 with a soft medium that lays down a decent amount of ink. This paper is very smooth. And this is an Arashuku ink, so it's a little bit of a different ink than just a Waterman Blue. and. Um, Again, it performs quite well. The paper is just really thin. I mean, Toma River paper thin, but as you can see, uh, no, uh, no bleed through. And as I look at it really up close, uh, there's no feathering. You know, and we got two different kinds of ink on this paper. So we'll set that one aside and we'll go to the next one on the ladder, uh, which is the, uh, the Polycomp. This one was 75 cents. I mean, this is a nice size, nice binding, a little bit of dust in there, may have been in the, you know, you really can't lay it flat like, like a lot of other notebooks, but for 75 cents, yeah, it can lay. It is uh, stitched. That's very nice. So let's take a look. Uh, first, we'll do the, the Pilot Heritage, because that's what I have. This is annoying with the cover, but maybe we'll fold it over. And we'll take a look. Well, we must be more insistent on this obeying our commands. Again, very smooth. And I don't see any, see a little bit of feathering but not, not significant, not considering that this is relatively inexpensive. This paper is probably not any thicker than the other paper, but I'd say we're getting some bleed through there. And since I've been very impressed with the Schaefer, let's uh, put that to, uh, uh, and I have to understand that this is a pull-off. I think that's always confuses me, a pull-off and, and unscrew, so apologize about trying to position this but and I can say very smooth again uh, as all types of stub nibs this is going to be very sensitive to the angle on the paper so it's easy to get skips if you don't position it properly because there's a lot of nib to get on the paper but yeah this is pleasant I'm going to enjoy this pen And, uh, yeah, when you put that thing down, it lays down a line. As we can look at it up close, um, the paper's responding quite well. I can, you know, other than the fact that it doesn't lay very well, 
Um, I could see using this notebook on a regular basis. So now we're going to the real expensive one. This one cost a dollar. This is graph ruled. And I can put your schedule in here and we have time zones so it uh, and also international time so that's pretty nice. Um, sorry I have some stuff in the back. I wondered where that was. And you know, you have a nice little information here, measurements, tables, conversion tables. Very smooth again. Uh, I'm impressed. So, uh, so far I would say I did quite well in my investments in uh, inexpensive paper from uh, Staples. This one I thought felt the best when I was purchasing the paper, but again this is not something you're going to write on both sides. That's a fair amount of uh, bleed through, but then this is this pen's laying down a fair amount of ink, so uh, that's what you would expect. So thank you. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, this pen is, like I said, $5.99 uh, at Staples. There seems to be a number of places you can get it in a retail level and you can also go online to your various uh, online retailers and uh, pick it up. So if you're interested in experimenting with a nice uh, wide two millimeter stub and uh, <clears throat> you want to give it a shot, these come in different colors uh, and other things of that nature and I like the white dot here. I mean that's pretty impressive that they had the balls to put that on this pen but they did. And as you can see, the, the cap band has some uh, engravings on it, you know. So all in all, I would say I, I'm impressed. A good investment. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, quick view of, uh, of an inexpensive pen. And maybe you might want to give it a try yourself. Ciao.